Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and welcome to the 56th episode of my second 1 billion iron ingot challenge. In today's episode, I plan to automate the orchid from the mod Botania. And as we see here, I have quite a bit of stuff done with Botania, but I'm actually going to set this orchid up over here. Uh, and I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to place down the orchid. So I think uh, right here would be a good location for it. Uh, the next step is I need to get it lots and lots of mana. So if I take my one of the forest, it shows that it does not have a mana pool connected to it. So I need to go ahead and do that now. So let's get a mana pool and uh, let's actually set up the mana pool uh, on this side of the orchid. Um, I'm not sure how close it has to be, to be honest. So let's do that and let's see if that... Okay, cool. So that looks like it is functional. Um, let me see if I can't bind more mana pools to it. I don't think I really need to, but uh, it might be useful to actually be able to bind multiple mana pools to it. So as you may or may not be able to tell, I am quite a noob when it comes to uh, Botania. So I'm just gonna keep clicking here. Okay, so I may or may not have that flower or the orchid bound to all three of the mana pools. I may have it just bound to this one over here, but I will find out when I place down some of my, uh, sorry about that, end of flames. So I do have a bunch of end of flames made up and I also want to go ahead and grab some, uh, some mana spreaders, and I don't know how many I'm going to need. Let's just grab 10 for right now, and then I'm also going to grab some more mana pools. Actually, I'm not super sure that I need to do that. You know what? Just to be safe, I am going to grab more of these. I have plenty of living rock and living wood, so it's not a big problem to make more than I actually need. So the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out where I want to put my endo flames and that's kind of uh, where I need to begin here so uh, for right now I'm going to assume that I can pull mana out of all three of these mana pools I'm not sure if that's going to be the case but I'm going to make that assumption right now even though it may be a little bit dangerous to do that so let's set up some uh, mana spreaders and I'm going to do uh, three of them for each mana pool. I this this may or may not be able to make enough mana. I'm not super sure to be honest. So let's go ahead and put down a bunch of these endo flames. Uh, Twelve for each of these setups, and I put that in the wrong spot. Cannot go there. Okay, so the next thing I need to do after I get these endo flames all set up is I need to get them coal. And I'm actually going to use a system that will be uh, pretty much identical to this system right here, in which I have a system underneath with uh, a redstone timer and automatic precision dropper. So let's grab some automatic precision droppers. Uh, and I should need, what, nine of these, I believe. So I have one and i need to go ahead and make nine more or eight more sorry so let's grab those i will also need a redstone torch if i can spell my goodness and i just simply need one of these so that i can change the mode of the droppers so each of these droppers will be uh, let's say right here and I need to place all nine of these down first. Actually, shoot. Um, I have that flower in the wrong spot. And I already see a slight issue with how I patterned these. Um, I am I think I'm going to move this mana pool back one. Uh, and the three mana spreaders around it as well. I'm going to move them to the left now one block so i'm gonna do this off camera and once i have that done i will be right back 
Okay, I'm back, and I decided to also go ahead and set up all of the rest of the automatic precision droppers. So basically, uh, this system is just basically the system I have over here, replicated times three. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to hook up the red... Actually, um, I do need to hook up the redstone, but the next thing I want to do is change all of the automatic precision droppers to pulse mode. Right now, I think most or all of them are on deactivation mode. They need to be on pulse mode because I do want to control them with redstone. So let's go ahead and change all of them to pulse mode right now. Now that that's done, I can probably get rid of that torch. And I need to do some digging. So let's go ahead and grab this. I think this is on single block mode. Uh, and it needs to be on single block mode. So let's go down. And from down here, I think I can actually do quite a bit of excavating because I need to create at least... Okay, so there's still actually a block somewhere. There it is. And it's still doing that. Why is it doing that? Okay, so, um, yeah. Let's change this to 3x3 three three mode for right now. Oh, not 3x3x3. Three by three by three. I just want 3x3. Three three. And that's just because I want to create a nice big space down here. And... It does open up in my tunnel out there, but that is completely fine. That is actually kind of what I planned. So, and now that I have this on one by one, let's, perfect. And let's carry this just over to the tunnel over here. That's cool. And that's just because I, I will be needing to run some redstone uh, stuff over there. Some redstone lines, I should say. So I can actually go ahead and cover that up. And I can cover that up. Basically, I'm just digging so that I will know exactly where my uh, automatic percentage droppers are once I do some digging under here. Okay, so that is good. And I should probably take this down and then dig over like that and that should be just about access to all of these guys so I can go ahead and actually I wanted to carry this over there we go and let's go ahead and do that as well and then let's dig this out once again so I can see exactly where my precision dropper is and then cover that up and just to make this a little more uniform I'm gonna go ahead and do that here as well okay so grass block goes there okay so let me make sure that I actually have access to all of these guys uh, other than okay I think I do I should probably just like square this out so that I can actually, oh no I don't, I know because I haven't squared it out. Um, and let's actually go ahead and do that now. Okay so there's the other, the two automatic precision droppers over here that I couldn't quite see and then if we do the same thing over here we should find the other two or the last two. Okay, so that's one, two, um, and I guess I didn't bother to go ahead and do that one either. I'm trying to make this as neat as I can. Okay, so I have this one more over, so let's do one more, not two more. Whoops, oh well. Okay, so let's lay down some torches because obviously this is a little bit dark. We don't want monsters in here. Also, I do want to cover this back up. I don't have stone with me. You know what? Um, let's just go ahead and grab some stone. I don't think we'll need much more of that. So just some stone here. And actually, I can cover this up from here. Here and here, yeah. Let's just build it out to here. I was gonna say, where is actually shoot? 
I'm not so sure I should have done that because I think there's one that I don't one yep because this precision dropper right here will need access and it is right there okay what I what I can probably do is punch that through like so and let's go ahead and grab some some uh, redstone conduit of some sort so I can use actually I need to use item duct is exactly what I need to use so I just need to grab some item duct here and I will need red, redstone relays um, and I will need three I will need nine ten yes I will need ten relays here so let's grab those uh, let's do this what I need to do is item duct redstone relay I need to put this to outputs and it can be on red it doesn't really matter what what color it is and then I need to drop that down one more actually you know what I can run it over and then I can use a cover from the top side and cover it up that way so basically I just need to run item ducts with uh, uh, redstone or uh, redstone relays to all of the precision droppers and put them to output mode and I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera because it's kind of tedious here uh, like I said it's just basically doing this and I'm also gonna connect all the item duct up and I'm just gonna run it along the ceiling uh, something like this and once I have that done for all of the automatic precision droppers I will be right back Okay, so I am back and I have all of the item ducts connected up to the automatic precision droppers up above with redstone relays configured like so. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I actually will need to get coal into all of the automatic precision droppers. So unfortunately for me, I actually need to tear out this wall that I just, you know, um, kind of uh, built. And I need to connect up something from my applied energistic system to over here so that I can get coal into all of the automatic precision droppers. So let's grab some of the black covered cable and um, I should have a bunch of it right here. I will also need an export bus. Uh, let's go ahead and grab some acceleration cards because I am going to be burning through quite a bit of coal here. Uh, also grab some coal and then uh, and shoot, that endo flame probably goes somewhere. So let's just grab a whole stack of them. I probably accidentally tore out one of the endo flames. So let's also grab some modular storage here. And I believe that this already has a storage module in it. So I also need to grab a servo. I should mention that. And there we go. And some other things I'm going to need real soon are a timer. Um, and I. I don't know why, but the timer won't actually go ahead and craft up. It will get to this point. Um, I usually have to do this to get it to actually craft. And I don't know why, but for whatever reason, it doesn't want to do so automatically. Um, but yeah, so I, I have the timer. I have a redstone relay. I should probably grab some structural ducts uh, because I don't actually need item ducts at the timer. Uh, okay, so let's get going um let's go ahead and build off of it right here so i can just drop this down and run it across and actually i can have it export from right there and i'm trying to be careful not to uh, teleport away accidentally so i can set this up acceleration cards coal with uh, modular storage right here and then I can just simply put the servo right here and it can be ignored redstone signal and then I think that should be good for the um, for the coal anyways and it will take a little bit for this to become active but okay so I'm trying to get in here get in here there we go I will need more channels so I should probably grab uh, some facades and then some emmy conduit and actually you know what I won't because I can do something else 
rather than having some stone being exported to over here. There we go. Okay, so let's cover this up. At some point, that bus will connect up and it will become active. And I'm not going to worry about it for right now. I think what I'm going to do right here is... Actually, let's throw down some more torches down here first. And, okay, so let's hit F7. I do need another torch there. So, let's see here. Um, I want to put in an elevator right here. That way I can actually have this completely closed off. So I'm going to grab a couple elevators right here and place one there and then one right here. That way I can easily get up and down. Uh, I also need to hit F7 here. Okay, so we have the coal, and that should be going out to the automatic precision droppers at some point soon. Uh, let me figure out, did I actually delete one of my end of flames? Yes, I did. It's right here. And I actually want to reroute this because I really, I really do want that to be an end of flame. And I can't put an end of flame there. Okay, cool. Looks like that's active now. So I can't put an endo flame on a grass cover. It needs to actually be a grass block. So let me reroute my item duct real fast. So I should be able to simply just do this. And it looks like I accidentally ripped out my servo and my redstone relay, but that shouldn't be a problem. Cool, and we can go ahead and set this to random is what I want to set it to. And then I can just grab a grass block here and put that down and then put an end of flame on top. Cool. That should be fixed. Okay, so I can actually get rid of this facades. Uh, let's go ahead and start the uh, mana. So I actually need to... Okay, so what became active? Why is it? Oh, I don't know why I did that. I apparently did not hit that with the redstone torch. Okay, so there we go. It's on pulse mode now. I, I need to set up the timer. And I'm going to set up the timer to be something like every, let's say, uh, less than a minute. Let's do half a minute. Let's do 600 ticks. Uh, 1200 ticks would be a minute so let's also hit this and I can get some structural duct right here and I need another relay I don't think I need any more of that so let's do this input uh, I also want to I want to have a lever here that way I can turn off this system if I so choose cool so at some point soon we should start seeing some coal being dropped and i just i did just see some so that's good uh the orchid does appear to be active and draining mana from this pool right here i don't think it's draining mana from any of the other pools so i may need to uh, change something up so uh for right now um what the orchid is going to be doing is going to be draining mana from that pool and it will start changing random blocks of stone which there are blocks of stone all over the place in i think an 11 by 11 by 7 uh, ra radius i think around the flower uh, they will start randomly turning into ore blocks so obviously i can't really automate this quite yet i think what i'm going to do is i need to get the mana that i'm receiving from these other pools and I think uh, I think what I can go ahead and do is I need to rebind this to this mana pool and let's see yeah it's drained that mana pool real quick so uh, I need to get mana from these other pools to that pool over there and I think if I just get some more mana spreaders and let me grab a few more. I should be able to, to do that. I think... I think I can chain mana spreaders. I, 
Actually, I'm not sure if I can or not. Uh, let me grab this. Oh, duh, it's not beside it. That's probably part of the problem there. It's not beside my pool. Okay, so I might need... I'll probably need a few more than the four I have. Let's grab four more. Okay, so this isn't... Wait, is that shooting off to this mana pool over here? That's not what I wanted. Can I do that? Yes, it looks like I can. Is that actually going to work? I think that's going to work. So cool. So it looks like I can chain my mana spreaders like that. Uh, the orchid will be feeding off this mana pool, but the mana can get from these other pools to this pool. So that should be cool. I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to wait on the uh, orchid to turn all of these blocks of stone around here into other blocks. As we can see, I have a gold block here and a or a gold ore here and a lead ore here. Those weren't there before. I'm 99.99% sure, especially the gold ore because gold doesn't appear this high up. So uh, the orchid is starting to work, but uh, what I need it to do is I need it to saturate all of the stone blocks around into ores. And then I can go ahead and automate it. So I'm just going to do some waiting, and that will probably be for quite a while. And once uh, all of the area around here is saturated with uh, blocks of ore, I will be right back. I am back, and after waiting a while, I realized that I was wrong about something about the orchid. Now, I was right in saying that the range is 11 by 11 by 7, but I didn't realize that the range doesn't extend down very far. So it's not actually affecting any of these blocks here. I'm not sure how this gold and lead ended up here, but um, yeah, that's just weird. But anyways, so the orchid is uh, ready to go. So if I get some stone and I place it down next to the block, it will actually transform it uh, fairly quickly. The orchid operates once every five seconds, so it should go ahead and do so there. And you can hear it when it makes that, uh, what I would call, punching sound. Um, unfortunately, this uses a lot of mana. It uses... Um, I, w I, I would say other terms, but I, for, for the purposes of this, I would say it would use a crap load of mana to, to transform one block of stone into an ore. Now, it's, uh, I do have a bunch of mana coming in, but still, I can easily drain the amount of mana that I have. Um, I actually quickly drained my mana pools by just playing around with it. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and set something up for this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an auto placer and an auto breaker. So, let's go ahead and set those up. The auto placer will be right here, and the auto breaker will be right here. So, let's go ahead and place those down first off. So auto placer, uh, auto breaker. So the auto placer, um, I'm actually gonna need to have some stuff. Actually, I don't necessarily. If I grab, let's get rid of some stuff here. Let's grab some item duct. And okay, so what I need to do is I need to get stone into the auto placer. Um, I also need to give the auto placer and auto breaker redstone signals. So let's go ahead and set up item duct over here. And what I will need to do is I need to wrench this real fast. And I most likely got a bunch of coal in here. Okay, so I didn't get much coal in there, so that's good. So, uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, let's bring... And I can use structural duct for this over here. I do not want these two lines to be intersecting, though. Um, I do need to get redstone relays on these guys. And I'm going to have the auto placer be on the green channel. And that will be an output. This will be on the red channel. And it's, yeah, will be on red. And be output as well. 
Um, I do need to go ahead and drop this item duck down to a furnace. And we can put the furnace right there. The furnace needs to be input from the left, which I can put a cobblestone generator over here to basically give this redstone furnace infinite cobblestone. And then to the right, I'm going to put an energy source, which I'm going to use just a Californium RTG. And then on the top, we're going to have an output, which will automatically output in, and that will flow into the auto placer. It should anyways. Yes, there we go. So it should have traveled up here. Cool. That looks good. And I do... I do need to change the mode on that. So I need to grab a redstone torch. And... If I can't make one real fast. And I need to put these on pulse mode. Um... I will also need a couple of relays. Okay, so what I want to do is let's hook this up first off. Drop this down and hook this up. Um, and let's do something like this. So my relays, let's let's put them over here actually. Uh, this will be green and this one will be red. They will be inputs. I'm going to have some repeaters here going into them. Okay, so the first one that needs to fire will actually be the red. Because I want to have the block of stone be here for most of my timer. So what I'm going to do is... Let's get rid of that stuff. Actually, I will... Shoot, I will need item duct out of this. Um, so... And I will need to wrench this real fast. I'm guessing some coal got it. Nope, didn't get in there. Cool. And then uh, what I can do is put my relay back. And this will once again be output on red. I will need an ender chest. Because I need somewhere for the items to go after they're broken or put into the breaker. Oh, shoot. Um... Okay, so I need to make an ender chest, and I realize I don't have the items for that. I can get them real fast, though. So I uh, am going to make an ender chest off camera, and then I will be right back. And so I'm back. I have an ender chest with me. And basically, I just need to set this thing down beside this impulse item duct. Uh, to keep things looking semi-symmetrical, uh, I'm going to actually put it... You know what? I'm just going to put it over here. Uh, that's the easiest place. So, yeah, this will be able to accept the stuff that I get from the auto breaker. And I actually need to grab a retriever so that I can actually pull the items out. Because obviously I can't use a servo up there because I have a redstone relay up there. So I just need to set this to be always on. Uh, it can be on nearest first. It doesn't really ma matter what mode I have it on there. That's too uh, right there. So now let's just set up or finish the redstone here. So the first thing ne that needs to go will actually be the breaker, like I said before. So uh, red channel needs to go first. So let me figure out which one is the red. This one is red, this one is green. Okay, so I just need to set the green to a longer delay than the red. And then I can put my timer over here. Uh, for this, um, I'm not sure how long I should set the timer. I know that the orchid itself can operate every five once every five seconds. The thing is, I'm not making enough mana to do that. So uh, let's go ahead and set this to, for right now, for 10 seconds. I think what I'm going to end up settling on for permanent usage is something more like uh, 30 seconds or a minute. I'm not really sure. But for right now, let's do 10 seconds. So that would be 200 ticks. And let's see if this works like I want. So basically, it should place down a block of stone every 10 seconds. and the, Or every 10 seconds, it should break the block and then place another block. And then the orchid should be able to activate and do its thing. Change it into an ore of some sort. And then the auto breaker will break it. Uh, essentially, this system right here is really similar to how I have Cobble Corp going. Except instead of lasers, I have an orchid here. The thing is, the orchid is not nearly as good as the lasers from um, 
yeah from the uh, atomic reconstructors from the mod actually additions that's what i was fishing for so it does look like this system is going to work quite well uh, let me make sure that the breaker is not piling up with items and it is not so i think that this is a pretty good system and i think it's a pretty final build so i'm pretty excited about this uh, it's not going to be very productive but still it's a pretty cool build and i really enjoy building it so anyways as of right now i have 865 million iron ingots which means um, since my rate is something like 25 or 26 million iron ingots per day that means i only have something like between something between five and six days left of this challenge which is pretty exciting i have really enjoyed building this world so far so uh, yeah if you enjoyed today today's episode definitely give it a like if you enjoy watching automation type stuff in modern minecraft like this uh, then definitely consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already anyways signing off i am minecraft phenom08 and i will see you next time